Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest letter came to us from Stockton, California. Lazaro wrote, Dear Joel, I've always wondered, do car tires get recycled? And if so, how? Well, Lazaro, the simple answer is yes, they do. And because of you, we've made our way up to the middle of California, a little city known as Belico. But we're gonna find out and see firsthand how they get recycled. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. about what happens to the tires when they reach the end of life and you have to take them off the car. Where do they go? What happens to them? Well, in California, a lot of them end up here. And I'm here with Jana, who's gonna fill in the blanks of what happens to the tires when they're done. Here in Northern California, where we recycle over four million tires every year. Wow. They come to us from Bakersfield to Chico and the Bay Area. And they come in on these, these type of collection trailers and uh, route trucks and other haulers bring them to us as well. And here they're getting unloaded manually and they're being sorted at this time as well. So anything that still has usable life on them, we don't want to shred. We send them to the back where used tire salesmen come and buy them from us so they can be sold again and can continue to be used either here or in other countries as well. What brought us up here is you make a um, what's called rubber bark. That's right. Rubber bark. Say that five times fast. Rubber bark, rubber bark, rubber bark. It's pretty tough. Huh? Yeah. This rubber bark is pretty much everywhere at this point, yep. right? Playgrounds and landscapes. It's safe. It's fun. It's lots of colors. We've got seven colors. It's one of the one of the leading products that we make out of tires here at our facility. So can we check out some of those tires? Absolutely. We want to go up around and, and check out. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Come on. How can a tire be recycled? Well, you can, like, melt it down and, um use it for other plastic stuff. You can reuse the tire. You could like repair it, use it for a tire swing. Tire swings are fun. I, I don't really know, but I think by a lot of things maybe. Probably by melting it down and then putting it in molds to make other things. Um, melt it down or grind it up. You can make new things out of it, like leather. Mash it up and then melt it back into whatever you want it to do, be in. Right, so we walked up here on the, was this the catwalk? Yeah, unloading dock. Lo unloading dock. Right. And somebody hands me these gloves right away. Yeah, we heard you wanted to go to work. <laughs> well, I don't know, I, I wanted to see how they're sorted. I didn't say I wanted to go to work, but here we are. All right, we're going to show you how they sort them. Like I said, they're unloading these tires and they're just going to pull them out of the trailer and they're kind of checking the tread and, and looking at uh, if they still have usable life. This is not look good. Right, they're probably not, but you never know. You know, they just take the outside off of this and they can do what's called recap it and they can put a new a new outside right on the top of this. So really? that one, depending if the if the side and the and the and the foundation of it are still good, it's it's still an option. So we have a uh, uh, truck pulling right up here, huh? Yeah, that one's ready to unload. That's all okay. yours right okay, there. Let me just, let me just get something clear. I said I want to see what it looked like. That's a big truck. It is. And there are a lot of other guys just standing around right now. They saw I came up here and they're they're not moving at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. There's over a thousand tires in that trailer right there. A thousand tires. Yeah. All right, I'm no expert, but I would say this is done. I would agree. So these tires are coming from where? All over Northern California, trucking companies, um, schools, fleets, uh, cities, counties, landfills. You know, coal tires can't be landfilled because they hold too much air and they float to the top if they're buried underground. So they can't landfill whole tires. So instead, when people take them to the landfill, we have our trailers there at landfills, and the landfill fills up trailers, and then we bring them here to get cut up and recycled. Wow. Yeah. Now, is that universal across the U.S. or just in California where you can't uh, landfill? It's pretty much universal across the U.S. that whole tires cannot be landfilled, but it's definitely California law as well. I got to see a problem here. Okay, you better watch out, Jan. This thing's coming out. Yeah, now this one can't go through the shredder. It's too big. This is one of the ones that has to be cut up with. We have a really big pair of scissors over there on, really? the, end of a, on the end of an excavator. And so they'll cut this up into smaller pieces before we can send it through. Let me translate what she's really trying to say. Joel, 
do not take that tire out of the truck. That's what she's really trying to say. Right, I'm not gonna let you put this one on the machine. That comes from, you know, California's big ag industry, which we service a lot of. Central Valley has a lot of farmers that provide food for us. Absolutely. And so they use a lot of tires too. So once that's done, then we move over here. Wow, look at that shredder. Yep. Yeah, that's the, the first the first process. There's, we have nine shredders and mills throughout the whole operation that it'll go through by the time it's completely done. That looks really, really strong. <laughs> we have to remember, Joel, that tires are designed to keep our family safe in extreme environments. So they're designed by the finest chemists in the world to just be sturdy and hold up under extreme situations, high heat, cold, speed on the on the freeway and set. And you know, our job is now to tear that all apart. <laughs> So it's got to be a pretty good machine to do that. You actually get tires that have the rims still in them. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with those again? Right over there in another part of our operation, there's a de-rimmer. So it's a big, like a clover leaf crusher, and it crushes the rim into a clover leaf, and then it releases it back out, so the tire pops off and the rim is separate. Oh, that's cool. Can we see that? Absolutely. All right. Let's go check that out. Yeah. A de-rimmer. Yeah, de-rimmer. Huh. And this machine right here is just, what, crushing them off, pulling them off? Yep, it's just pushing the rim right through, and then uh, all that metal is still recyclable, so we'll send that to be recycled, and then uh, he's going to get the rubber off there, and I'll send it over there to be recycled. Right. So this is the back side of the pile that we were on on the other side, right? Right. This is what we call our night pile. So this is where our door customers come in and drop tires, and then uh, we don't unload trailers at nighttime, so we uh, instead they use those grapples, and they load the tires from here onto the belt during the nighttime in the night shift, and they get them all recycled. So I'm just doing some math here. Four million tires a year. So approximately one million cars, because you know, there's four tires on it. Does that sound right? Am I good? Yeah, it's about right. Wow, that's a lot of cars. That's a lot of car tires. That's yeah, crazy. It is. You want some more math? There's about 30 million people in California, 30, 35 million people in California. And we, as a state or as a country, we generate about one tire per capita per year. So California as a state generates about 30, 35 million tires a year. Here's your fun fact. Using recycled tire products reduces your carbon footprint by 85%. Once it gets graded out, it goes onto the belt and goes to the first machine, which is a six inch machine. These look bigger than six inches here. Uh, some of the pieces are a little bit longer, but most of them are six inch in width that goes through that machine. We call it a boat that goes through the side, but you'll see a longer six inch wide piece. Okay, so then it's coming up on these conveyor belts and it looks like it's getting mixed with, what is that, water? Yeah, we, we inject water into the stream to help lubricate the knives, to help cut the product. The rubber creates a lot of heat, a lot of friction, and we have to have water in there to help cut the rubber. Now, are there a lot of knives in there? There's over 400 knives in each machine. Whoa! And we go in every 30 days and take the knives out and put new knives in. So it's important to wet the tires in order to help that process? Yes, it just gives it lubrication in order to, to help cut it. Okay. Now, once they're cut down from six inches, it goes to? After the six inch machine, then it'll go through a multi-size knife machine that's a four inch machine. And then once it goes to the four inch, you have one belt going to the left, one belt going to the right. What's going on here? Uh, the belt coming from the four inch to the two inch is taking the product that went through the four inch to the two inch machine to process to cut it to two inch size. Okay, and what about the one that's going back? The belt coming back is after it goes across that shaker table, it resizes the material. If it didn't get accepted as a one inch, two inch material, it gets recut again through the two machines. Oh, so you send it right back through, basically. Send it back through. Okay, and then the two inch machine, um, looks like a whole lot of shaking going on down there. Yeah, after the two inch, there's a, there's a, there's a machine that sizes the product, a taper slot machine that sizes the product. What can a recycled tire become? Shoes or other tires or anything else made of rubber. Give you come maybe a leather hat or something or something like that. Another tire. A bouncy ball. <laughs> I don't know. Anything more tires possibly? Bag. No, that won't work. <laughs> rubber, not plastic. Oh. Rubber, 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 rubber. I have no idea. You ever wonder how they take these big, huge tires and break them down to really small pieces? 
Look at that thing. We call that the snipper. And I say we just because I'm, I'm here. It's not my thing. So, but look at that, the snipper. And guess who's going to get the snip? Me! All right. Woo -hoo -hoo. Wow. It's like a big video game. All right, now what do I do? All right, this is going to activate everything. OK. Oh. Now everything's live. You got up. Oh my goodness. You got down. OK. And you got this. It turns it to the left, to the right. <laughs> We're moving. It turns it to the left. Uh huh. And then that's your stick over there. So my that stick will, will, will put, push you straight out. Oh wow! Bring it straight in. And then this is how you cut. So you pull this way and it cuts. Oh yeah! Push out that way, it opens up. Wow! Yeah. So that's so, it, huh? So lift it up and get on top of that tire there, real easy and slow with the levers. Oh wow! Real it's slow. Very slow. They're real touchy. There you go, now the left lever push it forward. This feels like that, you know, that game where you're trying to get the uh, uh, the stuffed animal in the jar? Yeah, yeah. Easy, easy. Oh, wow. Forward more, yep, there you go. Keep going down, keep going down a little more. All right, now try and cut. Oh my goodness! Wow, that is awesome! This is about a 36 ply tire. This tire probably weighed about 18, 1900 pounds. Wow, almost a ton. Yep. So what were you, what were you saying you wanted to show me on this the tire? The bead in these tires is a triple bead in this tire. It has three beads about the size of a baseball bat. When you say bead, this is where all the steel and everything Yep, is? high tensile steel in there, and that's what keeps the strength of the tire right around the steel rim. Now, what will you do with these big, huge tires? We really cannot process them. The, the rubber is too thick to go through the machines. So it's a small portion of our business, but we cut these up into small pieces and we just have to dispose of them. Okay. Now, do you get a lot of like NASCAR tires that come through here? You know, the, the zzz, zzz, zzz. what do they do with all those tires? Yeah, well, yeah, we do service some racing uh, places that, that bring us a lot of those tires. They're real easy to process. They're just a biased tire. There's no steel in them. Oh, okay. So this is a great example. If I see fiber, you're talking about fiber, right? Yep. Fiber, the rubber, the fiber, and then of course the steel. Those are the three items in a tire. What is inside a tire? Technically nothing if you just take it off, the, the, the wheel. A lot of air. <laughs> rubber. <laughs> and? Air. And? Air. <laughs> Um, maybe on a faster car, helium or just air, rubber. Rubber, germs, <laughs> dirtiness. <laughs> we have rubber, we have uh, metal, and we have uh, fiber. Yep. How do we take all of that, how do we separate everything out? Well, the steel, of course, is separated with magnets. Okay. So the more you shred it down, the more you cut it down, you use magnets to separate the rubber that has steel from the rubber that doesn't have steel. Oh. Once it gets cut further down, then we can start pulling nylon and the, and the fiber portions of the, of the product out. Okay. And of course, you use air for that. Oh, you just blow it out? Suction. Yep. Suction, suck, yep. suck it out, huh? Really? Yep. yep. When do we get to see, like, the rubber bark? When do we get to see the stuff that kids play on and all that stuff? Let's go. We'll show you that next step. We've got to break this down into the three-quarter form for that we make the rubber bark, and then you'll see that. So we went from six inch to four inch to two inch to two and one, and now we're to three fourths. Now we got to go over there to the next machines and cut it from this size down to the three quarter to the seven eighth size. Do we leave the metal in there? Nope. We get no. the. I'll show you over there. We'll get all the all the processes over there. Let's go. Come on. We're just done. Let's go. Here's your fun fact. Every car tire produces 12 pounds of usable rubber when it's a cycle. All right, Brett, so we took the two inches we're talking about, we shaved it on down, and this is what's left. Tinsel for a Christmas tree. Yep, this is the wire they get that comes out of that tire. Wow. Look, this is like dense. How much metal do you figure is in each tire? There's approximately about 15 to 20% steel of each tire. Wow, that's pretty significant. What do you do with all this now? Uh, we recycle it. Uh, they're the steel world, they really like it because of the tinsel. They really want it for both rebar and, and some other products. Okay. And this is a really, really big pile that's behind us. Yeah, here. we produce over a load a day of this material. When we say a load, is this considered a load right here? Uh, no, this, uh, yeah, there's about a load here. Wow, about, about a load. 44,000 pounds right here. Unbelievable. Wow, so. All of the metal and the steel that was in the tires, really, this is the end for it. Yes. So we know what happens to the rubber. We know what happens to the steel. It's being recycled. And here, you said, is the fiber? 
It's a lot of rubber with a lot of fiber in it. We'll screen that off or pull it off with air. And that's in the process of making our 10 minus to 16 minus material. And where's the fiber get go from there? Fiber, we can blend it back in with our fuel product and make a fuel market with it. Okay, and what about this fine rubber? What do you do with the fine rubber? We send the fine rubber back to our 10 minus, 16 minus, 20 minus material, and we sell that as a product. As a product. And what does this fine rubber do as a product? We either mold material, we mold mats in-house, or we sell it to a variety of different guys that want that material. Okay, so this isn't the rubber bar. No. This is where you do the mats. Correct. And you do that here too? Yes. Man, there's so much to see, so much to do. Let's go! We've processed it, we've taken out the steel, we've gotten rid of the stuff that still has some steel in it, and this is ready to turn into rubber bark. What's happening in there, all that noise? Over there, we'll take this product that doesn't qualify for rubber bark, and we'll grind it down even further, down to a one to three mil. Okay, so th not this, but the stuff that doesn't qualify. It's either too big, too small, either too much nylon or has steel in it still. So they're grinding it down to make it into a much smaller piece. Yes. What is crumb rubber? Uh, little pieces of rubber. I know what burnt rubber is, but I don't know what crumb rubber. Is it like spelled out with C-R-U-M-B? Yes. Oh, that means it's like leaving out stuff. Rubber that is screwed up. <laughs> Crummy rubber. <laughs> um, I think it would be little pieces of leather. Maybe a tire after it gets grinded up. Small pieces of rubber, small, small pieces of rubber. This is the last step of the process where we take the one to three millimeter and we cut it down to our, our 10 minus or 16 minus size that we're looking for. Wow, what? now what do you do with this stuff? Rubberized asphalt, molded products, and a variation of other things. Wow, this looks like the stuff that's on um, fake grass. Yes, they use it on artificial turf. turf. This stuff? Yep. So you use this in artificial turf too? Yep. So when they do the drag of the leg, you know, like, ah, it like shoots out all that turf. Yep, all the football players, soccer players, it allows them to play in the all weather type of material and allows them to play football. That's crazy. It, 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 why? Is it just because it's so bouncy? It gives it a realistic feel for the grass. It gives it the spongy feel and it makes it more like, like it's real turf. And so all the stuff that doesn't make it a rubber bark, and all the stuff you can't pull out, this is the last part of the process. This yes, is the end, right? That's the end. Okay. Now, take me to the rubber bark, please. Let's do it. All right, let's go. You see that? It's like... Why are you following me? Stop! Here's your fun fact. Golden Byproducts has recycled over one billion pounds of rubber. Do you realize how many tires that is? Let me hold the camera. Look at that. Wow, it's like one big um, um, something else. Um, ribbon blender. What do you? <laughs> to be exact. It's okay. It's a ribbon blender. And this is this like a bunch of bark in there, huh? Yep. And it's green because is that what color we're putting in? Yep. Is that good? Yep, keep going. All right. Let it go. Wow, we're mixing it green. Cool. And is that just what food coloring I put on there? That's again, top secret, can't tell you that. <laughs> All right, so now, is it being emptied out at the bottom or do you push a button? No, it's still mixing the color in right now. Okay. It, it colors it like coloring an Easter egg. It only coats around the outside of the, of the product. So you keep tumbling it around until it's all colored right, and then we dump it out the bottom and go dry it. All right, go ahead. Now dump our, our secret magic sauce in there. Secret magic sauce. Oh, wow. Oh, that's messy. Hope I'm not getting any on the camera. Let's keep it going. Yep. Wow. Now we just made a big old mess. Whoa. And just like that, we have rubber bark. Okay, Jenna's come over here. So, Jenna, how long will this color stay on? For 20 days, six months, how long? 10 years. 10 years. 
Yeah. No, we've been on the market now for about seven years, and we've had no complaints of color fade at all. So we say uh, full color fade 10 years. Full color fade. It's, it's on there for good. Even though you haven't seen the 10 year yet. You may get the 10 years, it may keep going, right? Yeah, it might even go longer, but we're saying 10 years. It's, it's on there good. Very cool. So now can we play on it? Needs to be dried a little bit. So it's just like if you were to pour concrete or paint your car, it's got to set a little bit and get dry so that then it really will stay for the long haul. Okay. And then can we play on it? Yep. Then we'll take you to a playground and let you play a little bit. I, I love that. All right. Cool. Here's your fun fact. Wilmer bark is five times heavier than wood molds, so it won't blow or float away. That's right. So we're testing out the new rubber bark <clears throat> while we're inside the rubber bark. Jenna, hey, Hello. I've Hello. got brown over here. And I got green. We have seven different colors actually of this stuff. There's a red, there's a bright blue, ocean blue, there's coal <laughs> black, granite gray, cypress gold. I think I named them all between black and green. Yeah. Okay. Two colors to choose from. And what is the most popular use for rubber bark? It's about 50-50, playground and landscape. So obviously it's a great playground fill. It has an excellent fall safety rating. So if kids fall on it, they just bounce right off of it. But wow, also for landscape. I did, I had a little bit of bounce right there. I'm just, I'm practicing here. You yeah. see, you see I, I, like, I got some, yeah. uh, some bounce up. That's pretty good. It's a great uh, mulch material. It's a one-time install. You don't have to replace it year after year like wood. It's not gonna disintegrate, uh, absorb moisture. Are there any negative effects of having this on your... Uh... There really isn't. It's a basically an inert material, and the color is non-toxic, non-VOC, so real safe for kids and safe for the environment, too. And all of this came from recycling tires. That's right. That's so cool. You feel good? I mean, yeah. You like, feel awesome. proud? Of course. Absolutely. This is so cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're really glad to have it in playgrounds or on, in landscapes and not have it instead in filling up our landfills. Here's your fun fact. California generates over 35 million tires a year. So, are your tires recycled? Cool. We have the blue, the blue bark, and with the blue bark, it kind of looks like the bottom of a fish tank. You know, you see those blue rocks at the bottom of a fish tank, but it doesn't feel like it. That's right. It definitely doesn't feel like rocks to fall on. Have you tried falling on it, Joel? Um, no. So you want me to do that? <laughs> Let me see here. I'm watching my head now, but actually, that wasn't too bad at all. That's right. You wouldn't want to do that if it was rocks underneath, for sure. That's crazy because it just feels like a cushion, yeah. like a kind of like a rubber cushion. That's I right. guess. Oh, very cool. Now, how do you know in terms of how much to put on the ground below swings at a playground? Playgrounds are regulated. They have um, minimum requirements they have to meet. So our products are tested against an ASTM standard. And a rubber bark, you just need four inches to get a nine foot critical fall height. Four, like, so like four inches right. to protect you from nine feet. Right, fall. exactly. Wow, wow, that's pretty, uh, to give a perspective, that's like, well, I'm six feet, um, almost, and just three, three feet over my head, basically. Right, exactly. And compared to other products like wood, wood mulches and stuff, you actually need 12 inches to get um, that same critical fall height. So that just shows you how much uh, safer rubber is than other um, products on the market. Wow. And like you said, this the color will stay here for 10 years-ish. Yep. Plus, perhaps. Yep. yep. <laughs> Very cool. Yep. So this is really cool. I appreciate you having us out here. This is cool to, to learn what you guys are doing with the environment. Even if you're not making rubber bark, you're taking all those the small, tiny coffee ground pieces, putting crumb them in our right. crumb rubber, mm -hmm. putting them in artificial turf, and or making your own mats. They do really good. Yeah, that's good. No, Joel, we really appreciate Curiosity Quest coming to see our facility and yeah. teaching kids across the U.S. how to what we do with our recycled tires. And thanks again for having us out. And I think it's time for us to swing. Let's see who we'll get the highest here. <laughs> Here's your fun fact: rubber mulch lasts 12 times longer than wood mulch. 
I want to thank Jenna, Brett, and everyone who makes Rubber Bark at Golden Byproducts. And I especially want to thank you, Lazaro, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something you've been wondering about or been teetering on, why don't you let us hear from you? Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the Send Us On A Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now, remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. All right, guys, whoa! <laughs> 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 Would you believe that they left me alone? <laughs> Brett said, go over to this big thing, turn his button to hand, and push this here. And apparently a dryer is gonna turn on. So, let's find out. like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositychquest.org.